Trio Chapter Communications Masterclasses. The first one uh, three months ago was about websites. The next one is about social media, that's tonight. And then we have three more on the schedule about every three months apart, covering newsletters, running effective chapter meetings, and finally communicating with your community overall. So tonight we're focused on something that we, we have some experts on the, in the audience right now that are gonna share both their experiences and some additional information. We'll get to them shortly. Uh, but the panel, uh, the agenda is our subject matter expert. It's gonna talk for whatever time it takes and then we'll open it up for discussion and have various people share what their experiences have been. And I have to tell you that even from the national level, uh, I've been doing a lot of the social media before we hired a person uh, to do this professionally. And uh, I must admit, I was inspired by Marty because Marty was on our board and he said, you know, it's really embarrassing that my chapter has more people following my social media than Trio National. And I had, had to look at it and he was absolutely right. And so I took on the task of keeping an eye looking for items and putting them up there. And I didn't do it full time and I dropped off after a while, but I did notice tonight, uh, Marty, I don't remember how many followers we had on our Facebook when you made that very accurate statement, but we have about 2,700 right now. So it's come a long ways. I believe it was down in the 200 range when you inspired me to move further. And yet I'm no expert in social media. And I hope that our guest tonight, subject matter expert, Brooke, is going to be able to answer some questions for us in her overall presentation. And by introduction, she's first of all, a liver transplant recipient back in 2005. So we're talking 17 years, a lot of transplant experience. And in that time, uh, she is not only a transplant recipient, a wife, mother, and chronically ill human. Uh, and she's done a number of things. Her business is known as the bonus years, how appropriate for us after transplant. And she works with her husband who has another business called BG Designs. And he isn't able to take the, uh, be with us tonight because Brooke is isolated in her bedroom because <laughs> one of her eight-year-old came down, nine-year-old? Eight. Eight-year-old came down with COVID. And of course, her husband then came down with COVID. And then her son came down with COVID. So she's hiding out in that bedroom and they hide out in the rest of the house. And uh, she's dealing with all of that in the background. <laughs> God bless you. And so uh, why don't you add anything you'd like to add in terms of your background? And then by sharing your screen at any point you're ready, uh, let's get into what you can show us about social media. And again, this is mainly for those who aren't here tonight who will see this in video. So we really appreciate it, Brooke, and uh, thank you for joining us. So what should I add to, by way of introduction of you? Oh, goodness. Um, well, if I start twitching, um, call for help because I've been in this room for almost a week by myself. <laughs> so, uh, no, I'll be fine. I I've been able to exit the house and go for walks, which I think has saved my sanity um, during <laughs> this very strange time. Uh, like Jim said, I'm a transplant recipient. I had a sudden onset autoimmune hepatitis at age 20, which needed liver transplant within six weeks. So um, rapidly sick, rapidly getting well, and then figuring out how to be an adult um, with a transplant and finish my degrees and get married and have kids and all the things. Um, and by the way, I, I should have pointed out, Marty is also a liver recipient. Steve, what's your transplant? I've had two livers and Brooke, they're also autoimmune was the reason. Small what? world, huh? Okay, yeah. well, we need to chat about that, Steve. Now, Sam is our outlier. Sam, tell us what you got. I got heart. When? <laughs> um, I just celebrated my seventh uh, uh, anniversary in April. Congratulations. Is a Thank you. Gary is not got a transplant, so he's sort of an outlier, but he doesn't want one. You don't you don't need to have one to be a part of our club. We'll take you. <laughs> All right. he's, got, he's got more experience than most of our patients do, though, in working with nonprofit organizations supporting transplants. Uh, so Gary, you're down in Florida. Say hello. 
Yeah, I've uh, been in the nonprofit, uh, I guess you could say transplant or uh, sector for a long, long time with the Kidney Foundation and other organizations. So, yep, been around for a while. And Brooke knows my background of 28 years with a heart transplant. So, Brooke, I'm sorry I interrupt you. Come back to you now that you know who your audience is today. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I am excited to be able to share with you what I've learned over the years. My husband and I have both worked in digital marketing and communications, um, and the transplant world is special to my heart. So anytime I get a chance to do something like this, where I can help any part of an organization I care about communicate better and reach a new audience, I'm here for it. So uh, I'm going to screen share with you just a little bit, because that's how I will I prefer to guide through that. So uh, here's here's the deal. What's, what's the point of social media? So we'll do this a little bit more interactive. So um, I'm not gonna ask you a rhetorical question. Everything will be uh, up for grabs. So social media, what's the point? Uh, anybody got a guess why we would care about social media? Today- to Broadcast um, who we are? To broadcast who we are, yes. Yeah. Today, it's where people go to look for anything. So to communicate with our TRIO community or the transplant community, you got to do it through social media. Yep. Go go where the people are. Right. Good. Anything else? Sam lives on social biggest, media. Go ahead, Steve. I'm sorry. I think you get the biggest bang out of a computer than you would a newspaper or by word or mm. by point of sale or any other, any other mode of advertising. Yes. Yeah, you have to know where your people are and go to them. They're not going to come to you. <laughs> um, so Jim and I just met this week. It's been very cool. Um, and we talked a lot about um, like my hunger to help the younger generations connect to the transplant community. I was transplanted when I was 20. And even though I wasn't technically a kid, I definitely felt like a kid. Um, and so Pretty much my entire advocacy life has been reaching out to young adults. Uh, and when I say young adults, that's kind of a broad spectrum. Um, so I'm going to kind of share with you why, why social media matters, especially for somebody like Trio, who um, chapters, chapters tend to um, age out. So people come and they join and they meet. And with no one new coming in, the chapter dies off. This happens with a lot of hospital support groups as well. Um, every support group I've ever been to at a hospital was older people talking about um, their medication management and their pain management. And I went looking for hope and I ended up being the inspiration. And that is not what I wanted as a young person. Like, I'm glad I could inspire them, but I wanted somebody who could say, I've been where you've been. I see you, this is hard sometimes. Uh, we're here for you. So social media now is really how we do that for each other. Um, let me share with you kind of my, goodness gracious. Here's what you're gonna know by the time we're done. Okay, and if you don't know these things by the time we're done, then I haven't done my job. <laughs> so uh, I've been an educator my entire life. So this is very much like, here are your learning goals for this session, <laughs> okay? So by the time we're done, you're gonna know why social media matters. Yeah who your target audience is, and what a hashtag is, and how it can help you. <laughs> that one's by request <laughs> from Jim. All right, so let's start with why social media matters, okay? You gave me some of your answers about uh, why you think it matters. Look, Let's look at st some data, okay? So 58% of the world's population uses social media. That's um, more than half. <laughs> So 50, 50 would have been half, 58% of the world is using social media and TRIO has that I letter for international. So it matters to us how many people are on social media. Two hours and 27 minutes, that's the average daily social media use per person per day, internationally. Um, so we think about watching a TV show or going for a walk and we think about, you know, 24 hours in a day, we're spending on average two and a half hours of our day engaging in social media of some sort. Um, that's not internet browsing, that's not Google searching, that is uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, 
uh, TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn. There are so many to choose from. But we when we talk about our time, we're talking about what we value, right? So however, you, if you look at your time, you take your 24 hours in a day, that's gonna show you over time the trend of what you value. And so when you see that people are spending two and a half hours a day on social media, they value something that they are getting there. Uh, we wanna tap into what that is so that we can connect with those people. Uh, this one, I, I had to do some digging for this, but there's been a 43% increase in social media use since COVID. That's a really big jump. Um, and that's typical internet users from 16 to 64. So um, I don't know about you all, but when, when I had to come into my home for COVID, probably a little bit sooner than the rest of the population, because we didn't know what on earth was going on, uh, social media was how I connected to people. Uh, for two years, I didn't get to meet friends' babies <laughs> when they were born. I didn't get to go to weddings. Uh, but I got to use social media as a tool to see those kiddos and send gift cards and, um, you know, offer encouragement to each other. And that's really a time when I started relying on social media to find community. Okay, so here's why social media matters. Okay, uh, a lot of today is going to be very basic framework. And then I just want you to be able to ask questions or think on it and get back to me. And I'm happy to answer anything you have. So we can use social media um, to reach our target audience, to engage with that audience, to grow our audience, and then to direct that audience. Um, we can't do that unless we know who our target audience is. Okay, so let's move into that. Okay. Uh, let's open up your mics for a second. Tell me who you think your target audience is. Transplant recipients and candidates. Okay. Transplant recipients and candidates. I like that. Every, everybody connected to organ donation and transplantation. Okay. Our trio members. Trio members. Do you guys have geographical parameters around your target audience? Not today, not with uh, the changes because of COVID. All of a sudden, the geographic boundaries of being able to drive to a chapter meeting have gone the wayside. So we have, for example, in Trio, Oklahoma, uh, she's built her chapter around support groups and she's got people coming from all over the country. So I would yeah. say not really anymore. The only one I've observed uh, post COVID, not post COVID, because we're still in the middle of it, it's in my house, um, is that it's more time zone affected than it is geographically centered. So uh, if you're if you're going to host a, a meeting, and it's live, uh, yeah, it's open to everyone. But if I want to host something and have my friends in the UK come on over, uh, I have to count that eight hour time difference to try to find a time. So I just think it brings us a whole new bunch of challenges, <laughs> not necessarily bad ones. Marty, were you going to say something? But uh, I agree with what you're saying, because our crowd has grown from a Maryland crowd to across the country, Canada and the U UK. Yeah, definitely. Um, if they don't know who you are, <laughs> it's hard for them to connect with you. So let's look at this target audience more more deeply, um, because if you don't have a target, your arrow is just going to go wherever. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have ever done archery. I did it as a Girl Scout a long, long time ago. Um, but I'm always fascinated that with sports and things like that, like if you're not, if your eye's not on your target, you're not going to hit it. Okay. So that applies to social media as well, because if you don't know who you're targeting, your reach is going to be so broad that you don't actually connect with anyone. Um, that did not seem logical to me when I first learned that. I was like, no, I want to be everything to everybody. Um, but if you look across social media, everyone has their own niche where they fit. Um, so you want to find the target audience that's your people. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm going to give you examples from the bonus years Instagram as we go through this and kind of just, I like to have something concrete to hold on to. Okay. So, so if you don't know who you're trying to reach, how will you reach them? So my target audience is men and women who are 21 to 44 within the US and that are transplant 
I put recipients, but really transplant patients. Um, do I reach people who are not in that 24, 21 to 44 age range? Yes, of course. Do I reach people who are not in the United States? Yes. Do other people follow my page that are not transplant recipients? Yes, they do. But when I'm creating content and sharing things, those are not the people I'm aiming at. Um, those are the people who kind of get caught in the, uh, I don't know the word, maybe tailwind of the arrow <laughs> towards the target. Uh, where they kind of just get swept up in it, either because of interest or co personal connection. Um, but the target for me, when I'm creating, when I'm thinking about how I'm going to share and post, is that demographic. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And then it begs the question, right? Once uh -huh. you know your target audience, and I just hope you're going there, and that is, okay, how do I reach out beyond those who know about my social media to find me. I'll go there, Jim. I promise. Okay. <laughs> uh, so why do you want to reach this target audience? A lot of this may seem disconnected at first, but it's a lot about honing in on your vision. Because if you don't have a vision, you're not going to communicate with a vision. So having a vision for this is my target audience. This is why I want to reach them. And here's what I want them to do next needs to always be the questions you ask yourself as you are posting and sharing content. Um, so for me, why do I want to reach the people I reach? Because I think there's a young demographic of transplant patients who are not connected anywhere. Um, and so when I design content, I think about what those people like. I think about what my target likes. From, from things like font choice to color to do they want facts or do they want faces? Um, Across the board in social media, people want to connect with people. They want to see a person's face. They want to hear a person's story. Um, being a social media manager is really being a storyteller. And lucky for us in transplant world, we have so many stories to tell. Like we will, we will never run out of people talking about how they've been affected by transplantation. Um, so, aha, here we go. So what do you want from those people? So you've got your target audience, they're coming to your page. Um, and then you've cast that vision for them and you're meeting their needs. So they keep coming back. Um, then what do you want them to do? So for me, social media is not the end, it's the means to the end. Um, because when you're on social media, you are reliant upon that company and that platform to host everything you have. Um, so what's the goal uh do you want them to join your chapter do you want them to come to an event do you want them to click from a social media link to your website and get on your mailing list your email list um, are you wanting your content to be shared more um, knowing what those goals are helps you know how to make your content so i would love to hear from you here uh do you know what you want from your target audience at this point involvement chapter meeting yeah chapter meeting involvement yeah okay anything else um, Brooke, may i ask you to do a uh, back up one screen of course that do one? we all it, okay you you go after the younger crowd what do you have a feel for the chapters for a trio what we go after or what everyone's kind of targeted now if we're on the right path or on a bad path? Um, I did as much as I could research-wise to look at everybody's trio pages, the ones that were easy for me to find. Um, and I think only you guys have a pulse on your, your demographic uh, because of how you operate within your chapters. Because uh, from what I understand, and Jim, you can totally jump in if I'm wrong, uh, each chapter can operate kind of as its own entity, right? Correct. So it depends upon who's leading the chapter as to how things go on social media, in person, virtually, all of those things. Is that right? That's right. I think most chapters would have common goals in terms of using social media, uh, yeah. but they are up to their own to either engage or not engage on different platforms, for example. Yeah. And so that's really why we're here helping people, uh, especially the online audience that's going to see this later, uh, to see what our chapters are representing here 
are mm -hmm. answering these very key questions. Yeah. So Marty, I know that probably didn't give you the answer you wanted. <laughs> well, no, I, I mean, your demographics was between 20 and 40, I believe. 21 I mean, and 44, when, yeah. And when we look at ours, we kind of target more 35 to 65. And the other thing that I wanted to mention, I spent two years working for a pedi pediatric transplant doctor doing his Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I realized at that point is you can't attract both audiences. I no. mean, the young, I mean, even the parents of the younger group weren't interested in anything, even our educational meetings about transplants in general. But mm -hmm. we can never make that cross. I, it took, I worked on it for two years and couldn't do anything with it. But I was wondering, did you do you find the same thing as that? Um, so what I found so far is that, and, and this is not just with my transplant experience and my previous experience, uh, different social media platforms target different age ranges really, really well and different genders <laughs> really well. Um, actually, let me do this. Uh, see if it'll let me slide over here okay oh yeah this will do it <laughs> this isn't as pretty i apologize um okay so ugh, i really don't like how this looks Ooh, perfectionist problems okay we're seeing what you're looking at yet we're you can't see it yet slide. oh oh good this is, this is even better <laughs> i don't want you to see how ugly this looks i just need to get it situated uh, all right well maybe this won't work resume share new share there we go we're still looking at your slide number 10. how are we now there you Did go it switch yeah. okay so let me open this up well, my slides were prettier, I promise. Okay, so look at this here. Um, so this is social media use over time. So just the trends going upward from 2006 to now, uh, the percentage of adults who are on social media, like one site, at least one site, okay? Um, and then when you look at age, this is let me know if you can't see anything I pop up. No, you're doing fine. Great, okay. So um, by age here, your 18 to 29 year old is the upper line and your middle, well, second line is 30 to 49 year olds, 50 to 64, and then there's a pretty drastic difference, uh, 65 and over, just in general social media use, okay? Um, what I find really fascinating, let's see. So here are the most common social media, social media platforms. <laughs> Is that really small? No, I need to try to make it bigger. Okay. Um, so we've got, they listed a lot of them, Facebook, Snapchat, Nextdoor, Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, Reddit, Twitter, and TikTok. Uh, this one up here that's very short line that's youtube and it is growing so fast <laughs> because people want to connect with faces they're doing uh videos pre-recorded they're doing videos live uh it's it's built youtube is just like through the roof right now uh and then this very very steady line right below it is facebook uh, it's it's been nothing but consistent <laughs> and it do, it's not had a giant jump but it is kind of held its own. Um, now, to me, it's like everything else is down here. Um, depending on your demographic, like this is Instagram. Uh, it's a definitely younger demographic than Facebook. And so when when you're designing what you're going to share, there are small tweaks you can make to share so that you're not creating brand new stuff for every platform, um, but that it appeals to different ages. Um, Interesting. <laughs> uh, and there's a there's there's going to be way more <laughs> than I can even share with you, and I wish I had t more time to do that. Um, so if and, I interpret what you just shared with us, if I was yeah. a chapter that didn't have a social media platform presence today, mm -hmm. I should go to Facebook. 
because that's going to give me the biggest return for my time investment. If and then, then I can. That's the range of people. Elsewhere. Yeah. So I started because I knew my demographic was younger. I started with Instagram. Okay. Um, Facebook is broader. People who are on Facebook like using more words. So they like pictures, but they also want to read a story and they want to engage with the story. Mm -hmm. Instagram, you want a catchy graphic or a catchy video. Uh, you want statistics that are shareable. And it, it's, it's, a different, it's a different approach, <laughs> which is why hashtags are so helpful. Uh, let me see if I can get us there. Okay. So... Uh, there we Which go. Explain to your audience here, just by the way, uh, when Brooke and I had our conversation, it was a very engaging conversation, went for more than an hour. It was meant to be a 15 minute introduction of what Trio was and what she had to offer. She was very interested in our youth. We do have a youth circle presence on our website. And I shared with her the challenge over the past 10 years of trying to find some young people who would take on the leadership of using uh, that platform, if you will, where we have on our website the opportunity to share pictures and a story meant to inspire other young people who are facing transplant and to realize that they have a life after surgery. Mm -hmm. And she is very interested in that. So we have started a conversation about maybe this is something that she would have the and be old enough to have her priorities behind her uh, to do something like that versus the young people that we've had over time. We've try I've tried it with at least oh, five, six or seven individuals who said they were interested, but their priorities very quickly overran their interest. And I, again, we had a board member uh, who uh, said, Jim, you know, maybe the problem is you're too old for this audience. I said, <laughs> okay, listen, you want to take it over, go right ahead. She did. And much like you did, Marty, uh, Six months later, she says, I give up. They're not responsive at all. And they're not, they're not blah, blah, blah. so she gave up. <laughs> and so we still have it there, but it doesn't have any leadership. It doesn't have any life, but it does meet what you said before. Uh, it is totally different for young people. And we have something to start there. We could do yes. anything we wanted with it. So just wanted to give you that background. Uh, conversation has begun, but it's got, got hasn't gone any place yet. Brooke, go back. If we can tap into the younger generation, we can, we can put all of the main, the hard labor of that requires a lot of energy on them and it doesn't even face them. Right. So like, that's what I'm learning. I'm not, I'm not old and I'm not young. I'm right in the middle right. and uh, I get tired. I've got an eight-year-old and a five-year-old, but if you can cast vision and show passion for the younger generation, they're going to want to step up and lead. And all you get, all you have to do is coach them. All you have to do is say like, I'll be there with you through it. Uh, they'll do your social media managing for you. Like if you have somebody in your chapter that you're like, oh, they'd probably be good at this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just find somebody to walk alongside them and say like, I'm going to champion you, but you're going to do it. And you're going to learn what it feels like to be a sp accountable for, for a, this kind of thing. Anyway, side note, really fun though. <laughs> okay. Hashtag time. What's a hashtag? Everyone chime in, tell me what you think it is. What is it? What's its purpose? I think of it as a pound sign there as opposed to the at symbol, and I don't know what its purpose is, to okay. be honest. Anybody else? It takes you directly to whatever the topic is after the hashtag. Yes. Or the page or whatever. Yes. Are okay. both those symbols meant to be hashtags? Both the app no. symbol? No. Okay. No. So let me uh, start. Let's start with the hashtag. Sam, the you want to say something first? Oh, yeah, yeah, Sam. Yeah, I mean, I think a hashtag um, just keeps everything together on across platforms. You know, so if you want to hashtag something, if you reference it in one place, if you click on that hashtag, it's going to show up wherever else you've referenced it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it was it hashtag started with Instagram when they were still trying to figure out like how to make up for the fact that they don't have groups and pages like Facebook does. Uh, but but people are posting about the co a common theme. So people started using hashtags and then those hashtag hashtags started trending. Um, and so you can go type in any hashtag on Instagram 
and I'll, I'll even go on my Instagram and show you guys um, and pull up however many things <laughs> uh, that you that are connected to that. Donate Life is a really good one. Uh, I'm a Transplant Life ambassador and a UNOS ambassador, and they both ask us to use the hashtag Donate Life because that's Donate Life America and I think globally even uh, what we use to represent organ donation. Let, let me have you back up just a minute. Who creates the, the hashtag subject? Anybody that wants to. And so do you have to do something to create it or just start using it? Start using it. And is it only an Instagram or can you use it elsewhere? You can use them on any platform. Uh, Instagram has been the most helpful um, because of the way it's set up. Uh, Facebook. Facebook, you can use a hashtag, but people don't like typically search for a hashtag. And Twitter uses hashtags a lot. So it's to, it's to find information on a topic. So if you want to be discovered when people are looking for hashtag business or hashtag liver transplant, um, they will type that in. And anybody who's put that hashtag in their post is going to pop up. Well, wait. So for example, and you just hit the, the mother load for, as far as I'm concerned, because I've been confused about this forever. And when people was explaining to me, it didn't make sense. If we wanted people to be able to discover, as we were just talking about before, our particular Facebook, Twitter, whatever, yep. we would just put someplace in a in one of our messages, doesn't matter where, mm -hmm. hashtag and Trio Maryland, for example. Yep. And then anybody that goes looking for Trio Maryland is going to find that. Yes. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to share my Instagram screen with you. Because why not? While we're here. Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Yep. Yes. All right. So I pulled up the hashtag, you know, ambassador. Okay. Uh, by doing this, going to the search bar on Instagram, and I typed in, you know, ambassador, didn't even put the hashtag in just typed it in. Okay. Nope. That, that's one that I follow, so that's not the one I want. So it's showing me that 431 posts have been tagged with this hashtag, okay? Mm -hmm. um, right here, we have top posts, which means they've gotten the most views or likes, the most engagement, all right? If I scroll down, we have most recent. Hey, look, there's my face. Um, so when people are on their phones, it does look different on their phone, but if they search a hashtag, they're, they're going to see the top posts, the top nine posts of all time. And then they're going to see the most recent ones that have a, a lot of engagement. So there's me and my husband at my doctor's appointment on Friday. Here's my hashtag list. You know, ambassador, donate life, saving lives together. I'm an Enneagram coach, which is a life coach. So I tagged a few things there, chronic illness coach. The bonus here is I started tagging all of my posts with that. So when I go to that, I can find everything I've posted about my business. Hmm. Um, so if I, so even if like, so if someone's on my, my picture here and they're like, oh, what's Donate Life? And then they click on that hashtag tag. Look at the number of posts that are tagged Donate Life, 382,800. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now you can follow hashtags on Instagram, which is really cool. Um, so if anybody posts something in Donate Life, it comes up in my feed and then I can start following their account if I find another transplant person that I want to connect with. Now, again, donate life just is out there. It's not yours out it's there. You, yeah, you can't own, term. yeah, you can't own a hashtag. You can't okay. make people not use one that you thought was original and yours. Um, and what happens? I noticed on the screen you have there, mm -hmm. that heart shape is probably following. Our Hearts are likes, likes for likes, the post. Right. And the other one is comments, comments. that people posted. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you, uh, I'm sorry, what the heck would the heart shape be on, on your particular, no, when you followed a hashtag, mm -hmm. you get to say following and that would be the so heart So I'll shape. unfollow it. Look, okay. so I unfollowed Donate Life. Right. So that's what shows up. Then when I click follow, and if right. I go to my main screen here, it's going to pop up. Everybody that I follow in my feed, let's see if I can find one. Because the algorithm does a lot of decision making for us. 
unfortunately. And everything on my page is parenting and transplant. <laughs> um, so none of the hashtags are popping up in my feed right okay. now. All right. But uh, let's say. Now, what's the difference between the hashtag and the at symbol? And the at. Mm -hmm. What a good question. You're such a good student. No, I'm stupid. <laughs> no, there are no dumb questions. And that's how we learn. Like, we don't. We don't learn by doing other things. Sam's our local expert in using these. He's all over the place, and he yeah. them all hey, the time. Uh, Brooke, just just yeah. for just to demonstrate, can you type in the hashtag blessed? Yeah, you'll see. Like, there's over 51 million people or hits. Blessed. Look at that. Yeah, it, it's that's 143 million. So you know, when you use when you do posts, if you use hashtags like that, and as in transplant and stuff, you can you can use those things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, amazing, uh, blessed stuff like that, and it links at everything, everything, yeah. right? So, and that's a cross platform. So even on LinkedIn, in a post, you can follow that hashtag. Yeah, you know, so that's it's just thing. it ties together, you know, so everything. Yeah. That's really good. And so, um, I guess what I want to say about hashtags is the basics is if you want to like put yourself into a category, tag it with a hashtag. You can always research it before you do it. So if you're like, uh, if it's got 143 million like like posts, yours is not going to show up to that audience because it would have to get a lot of likes for that to pop up anywhere. Okay. If you pick something like Donate Life America, which is 12,000, your odds get better <laughs> of, of what you're posting showing up um marty what what is your trio instagram do you have one trio maryland do you have an instagram yeah I, I don't use it that much though yeah we haven't really instagram isn't one of my tools that i use on a regular basis I, we, we know it reaches a younger audience but um we haven't really well there's a hashtag for trio maryland oh yes but i can't find a like an account no, I've never really worked with it. I may I used it one time, I think, but I didn't know the uh, parameters. Yeah, the parameters to it. I didn't know how much it would help us or hurt us. Mm -hmm. so I just didn't know enough about it. So every every month when we post our uh, speaker and the topic, we should always put the hashtag Trio Marilyn on that post. If that's what you want to do. So if you want to be able to have have people go to anything that's trio maryland related with that hashtag mm -hmm. then that's what you would use okay. if you're wanting to grow your audience you want to find a hashtag that's not so niche like organ transplant or like you'd have to kind of you have to kind of do hashtag research so that's like a whole other class um not to be intimidating <laughs> no don't be intimidated by it at all but it is an easy way to get people who don't follow you to see your posts um, and with with a little bit of practice, it's very, very doable. That's part of the answer to the question before. How do you get audience once you know yes. it's the audience you're targeting? How do you get them to yes. your resource? Okay. So um, we'll use an example from my page because that's the one I have access to. All right. So I have um, a Linktree account in my profile uh, because I always want to share more than one link. And if you put a link in your captions uh, on Instagram specifically, people can't just click on it, which is really annoying. But I think they did it on purpose because on Facebook, you type in a link. Right. And like the picture pops up and the yeah. website pops up like how handy that is. It doesn't work that way in Instagram land. Um, and so. Here, uh, if, if there's something I'm trying to find one that I was like getting people. OK, so we did some some other people took over my account during pediatric transplant week and people had to register for our webinar at the end of the week so um oh over here jim this will answer your question do you see where it says at the bonus years right so if you put at in front of it that's going to tag someone's account so if they have an instagram account you would use that instead of a hashtag so um Hudson so it, would, it would be like hashed uh, at Trio National and that would be, you know, it, yeah. would, it would come up. So this is one of the pediatric families that took over my account two weeks ago. And so 
putting an at in front of their username is going to tag them in whatever you post. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Marty, I'm seeing a no. I'm not too sure. Uh, I'm still not clear on it, I guess. Okay. Um, do you have a, do you know what question you want to ask or would you like me to just keep going and let you marinate? Yeah, we'll think about it for a few seconds. Okay, sounds good. Hey, hey okay. Brooke, Brooke uh, I have a quick suggestion. Okay. Like, it, it, is that a live, uh, you're looking at a live, your own account, right? Yep. So if you just create a brand new post and just do a, do a at symbol and it just show, it show how it just shows up, you know? Let's see. Let's see what pictures are on my computer that I can just pull from really quick. Okay. But like a brand new post and you just say yep. at something and then it'll pop up the oh. it's an account. Okay. So let's pretend I'm going to promote my coaching. Uh, so that's the picture I chose. Um, then over here I can, you know, make edits, which I hardly ever do. Then I would write my caption mm -hmm. like, thank you. And I would put at trio. We and go. it's going to pop up accounts yep. I follow. So look, thank you, Trio National, for letting me work with you today. Uh, and you can, thank, you can thank multiple people too, like <laughs> at Donate Life or whatever. You know, yes. So. so you can do in your post, this is very detailed, but I'll tell you in case you want to know. You can have up to 30 in your post uh, total hashtag and ads. So you can decide how you use them. You can mix them in like this where you thank Instead of me saying, thank you, Trio National, and then doing the at way later, I can do it right there with the post. Or you can do them separately down below. I think the cool part is, is as you're typing, you can see. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, how many people, because you want to really pick a few from a large range, a few from a medium now, range, and a few niche ones. Now, we as Trio National, do we get notified or do we know about this post in any way? Yes. So anytime someone tags you in a post or a story, they're going, it's going to send you a notification. However, you have your notification reminder set up. Okay. And that's usable on any of those platforms. We use four platforms. We use Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Yes. And so, um, okay, got it. So for me, um, I have my Instagram connected to my Facebook. Um, and it is, uh, I, I start with Instagram and there's a platform that connects them both. So you can design your posts for both of those places, post once and tell it where to go. Uh, it's a free post. It's a free thing that Meta uses now for Facebook and Instagram. Um, Brooke, just to let you know, I've let Joy from Long Island join us. Hi, Joy. And one of those oh, other meetings you. we're talking about. So, Joy, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is Brooke, our subject matter expert, talking about, in this case, the pound sign and the at symbol <laughs> as powerful tools on our social media. Go ahead, Brooke. I'm sorry. Very that's super that's powerful. powerful. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Well, thank you. Um, so, uh, this may be as clear as mud for some of you if this is brand new content. And I apologize that it's kind of muddy. Uh, it's, it's going to give us enough to get in trouble. It's okay. It's it'll give you enough to give you a taste of. Uh, okay, may, hopefully it'll hopefully you'll walk away saying I'm not so overwhelmed, but I do have some things to learn, <laughs> um, and I will be available post post content to help you. You can email me. You can reach uh, out and session. remind me, and I'll say anybody that has questions as they view the video of this, yeah, can send their question to info at trioweb.org and we'll pass them on to you. Gary manages that and we'll pass them on and then you can respond and we can uh, put them out there in ways that people can find it. Yeah. So Good. Jim, can I ask a question? I know I just popped in, but if people send questions, can we get the question and answer so we can learn something? Yeah, that's that what I just possible? said. When she responds to the question, we're gonna send it back to the person that sent it in and try and figure out where we could put it so anybody could find it. But Perfect. to the person Thank asking you. the question, they would get the answer. Thank you. And I'm then, not sure how to do it so that everybody else gets to see the question and answer after this is all over, but we'll figure something out. Thank so, you, yes. Jim. Thank you very much, Brooke. Thank Great you. Good question, Joy. Go ahead, okay. Brooke. Okay. 
I would love your feedback about hashtags and if that was like a, an overload or mm -hmm. if it was enough. Because <laughs> I don't for myself, I made it clear enough that I can go get in trouble. Okay, yeah, just a little bit of trouble though. And I know where to go if I still have questions once I start trying to use it, right? Yes, absolutely. I'm available for that. All right, we're watching our time, by the way, just so you know. Mm hmm. Okay. Oh, good. We're right there in questions. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Oh, you're perfect. Um, I want to just, uh, if you'll stop sharing at this point. Okay. No more sharing from and me. Then, and then I'm going to share. Um, Oh, wait a minute, I gotta figure out where I get. I gotta move this over here. Okay, so now. Oops, did I just lose everything? No, it's. Right. That's me. That's my okay. face. Right. <laughs> what I want to do is just point out the different platforms I just mentioned. So here's Trio on Facebook, mm -hmm. which is where Abby, and Abby is again the person that is now taking feeds from both Gary and I in terms of stories we can find and herself being a transplant recipient also is tuned into the news. Uh, we put things out here on a regular basis. And so now uh, I've been very pleased when I go here, I can see that the latest post is fairly recent as opposed to months ago. <laughs> so you can see that this is an active uh, social media site. And here is Twitter. And we've locked this one down as the lead post at all times. So it's pinned. I learned how to do that. And again, here we go nine hours ago. So she put this one up, very pleased. And then you have Instagram. And we have a lot of things going on there also. And we have LinkedIn. So as I was mentioning before, Marty inspired us to really pay more attention to this. And so we have presence in all of those. Now, mm -hmm. I got to share with you another one. This is from our website where all our chapters have a page. And this is Trio Maryland's page. And I pulled it up so I could show you just how anybody going to your chapter can see where your website is and what the in, uh, social media links are. It was interesting, it. Marty, because when I clicked on the uh, Facebook, it didn't work. And I had to go out and do a search on Trio Maryland to find out how you change this to something different. And I just replaced that tonight. So it's working now, but uh, it's one of those things that people have to pay attention to. And then you go to their Facebook and they are always very active too. In fact, just two hours ago, they obviously put some stories up there. And so I would have to say that of all our chapters, uh, Trio Maryland, and I know they never get tired of hearing this, uh, are always on top of the, the important stuff, be it a very classy website, uh, the biggest organization in terms of membership, so that you're obviously doing something right. And also in terms of social media, you can see their presence on the ones they want to focus on, which gets back to your idea of who's your audience you're trying to target, which of these you're going to use. And so I'm going to stop sharing that, but I'd like to turn this over to Marty, just to Marty. One of the things that I'm concerned with uh, is that the tree, the chapter presence, when you get into something like this, all of a sudden they say, oh, my God, I got another job I have to do. And you're an example where you are the social media person for Trio Maryland. And I would say the best practice would be uh, if you're a chapter president like Joy is, for example, uh, you want to find somebody else to take on some of these roles as opposed to taking on too much. So talk to me, how did you become the social media expert and website mess message for Trio Maryland. It's probably because you like to do it. Am I right? And I'm lucky enough to have a vice president that I live with <laughs> who is she, very she, good I'm at sorry, She already gave you credit. When I asked her when I invited this call, she said she wasn't going to make it, but you do all the social media. So you can't uh, take it off on her at this point. She already get. No, what I wanted to say is I have a very unique uh, situation, unlike some of the other presidents. I live with the vice president. <laughs> she happens to have great administrative skills. Yeah. And I suffer from ADD. Okay. So I can't get enough physical activity. So ever since I found the computer, I up until I had my transplant 12 years ago, I never had a home computer. So I, I mean, I started there and I've just 
that is like playing a game for me. Just like you watch the kids play their games all day long. Mm -hmm. I can sit for hours and just stroll through figuring out how to beat the competition. How do I find somebody new in our group? How do I partner with another organization? So yeah, it, I have a very unique group of blessings and that's kind of how we make it work. And I think a lot of people benefit from the fact that Marty does so much because they steal stuff off our page endlessly all day long. They don't have to go anywhere else. They just go to his post and steal them. I wish we could, I don't know. Am I allowed to steal? I'm only kidding. I won't. <laughs> well, well, I'm I'm kidding. Kidding. <laughs> I will say, Marty, if they're stealing from you, like not like screenshotting it, but like reposting or resharing it that's bringing more attention to your platform yeah no it's good yeah. but so, some days it's it's annoying it depends who's stealing it i think yeah. and what's the old saying you know stealing off of somebody's facebook page is like a compliment yeah. because yeah. they like that work so much so i've always looked at it as hey that must have been really hot somebody wanted it good i was so, gonna say there's nothing new under the sun so we're not actually stealing anything because and, nothing and new. jim really i think what you have to do is the desire has to be there you have to find somebody that really wants to do it right. i mean i feel like i make a difference with it so you kind of have to find somebody also with you know that kind of an attitude to do it on a religious basis and years okay. ago jim we actually had two people that um marty signed up to do uh social media and the only thing one of them posted, the one the one um, prerequisite we had was don't post personal stories about yourself, you know, because this is supposed to be for our audience, not your personal page. And the only thing they posted was personal stories about themselves. So we just haven't found that person that really wants to to do or pick up a piece of this job. I think part of that problem the challenge, I don't, I don't like the word problem, challenge is when you're so passionate about something, you're looking for somebody to have at least that much passion, if not more. <laughs> and there's not many that reach the levels that you and myself included uh, are, are spending on this. Now, Sam, you are every place on the internet. Every time there's a <laughs> webinar, uh, I mean, the, um, the Philadelphia OPO had an, an event the other day you have nothing to do with Philadelphia and you were there. So how are you doing that? How, do, how come you spend so much time of your life wandering the internet to be on every one of these things? I mean, tell us how, what's your secret? I mean, it's my passion, first of all, you know, and so um, I learn, you know, from all of these things and then um, it, it helps me do better posts and better content. You know, I'm, I'm all about content. So I create a lot of content for a lot of people also mm -hmm. so uh, so I, I i troll around and uh, i've had um, success and I've, I've also been blocked from facebook because of a lot of shares and stuff you know because uh, so uh, but that's part of the whole thing you know steve how involved are you with social media out there in san francisco in your chapter very little okay much of this is you know, I, th I thought I had really accomplished something when I got fairly good with Facebook. And listening to this today, um, you know, hashtags and all, all the intricacy around going between different platforms, uh, this is just taking up, it up not one notch, but several. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, she said something, and I don't think everybody picked up on it. There are tools out there that allow you to, when you do a posting, put it across the platforms, different platforms, and you choose which platforms. That's good. But I, I must admit, I'm still a manual person. So if I have a story, if I've seen something on Marty's posting that I say, that's really good, we gotta put that out in a broader range, I will go out to Trio National's Facebook, then I go over to Trio National's Instagram, then I go over to Twitter, and I really don't go to LinkedIn much. And then if it's related to something that's going to be different uh, for Trio Philadelphia, then I put it out there. But each one, it's a posting to individual. But Brooke, you, you alluded to something I've heard about, and that is some tool that allows you to do one posting and show up on several platforms. What's that tool? Um, so there are lots of paid options, but you don't have to do that. <laughs> I okay. use a paid option because I am really intentional with strategy. So 
uh, I don't just post what I am thinking about posting. I plan for the year and then I plan for the quarter and then I plan for the month and niche down from there because I want everything to be purposeful and I want to use my time the best I can. Um, I'm looking for the little picture of the app um, on my phone. So because Facebook and Instagram are owned by Meta, you know, that obviously allows it across. Yes. Okay. Sam, do you know what the app is called? Because I like very rarely use it. You know, there's like it's like their business app between okay. Facebook and Meta. I can right. I can follow up and give you guys that info okay. if you want it. Right. Yeah, it basically I, asks you whether you want to do it over there as well. Okay. Joy, what social media interactions do you have with your Long Island chapter? And are you the one that does it or somebody else have you assigned it to or what or do you not really pay much attention to that? Because I know you're fighting to get your website up. Yes. Uh, well, I just want to share a little exciting news, even though we inverted our, our domain for a second until we get our domain back. It's a long story, but we we used to be litrio.org, but we switched it for now to Trio LI, but we are going to go back to the other one. But somebody found us. We have a, a web page under Trio LI and a teacher found us. And I'm excited about that because it just happened. Uh, and asked for class uh, teaching in her classroom, our school speakers program. So I'm excited about that. And I have, I put out a grant and we have help with the grant. I do corrections and I do go on the website because sometimes they omit information or have the doctor's uh, name spelled incorrectly. They actually um, had somebody at, uh, from the wrong place. So I am involved, probably a little too involved. And uh, we have a Facebook page that I created and, and we are gonna do Instagram and everything. And Jim, you're right. I am doing Facebook, I'm, I plan on doing Instagram and I really need to get a volunteer to do it because we don't really have the time to do right. everything. And today I was posting on different pages that we have a meeting tonight. And it could be, I, I'm not complaining, but it could be very time extensive. And I'm right. sure there, there's volunteers that could help out. So. And that, that's why a best practice is to share. And I work with, with my pastor at church. Um, the, uh, he does so much. And I try to convince him that when he's asking somebody to help, it's not like he can't do it. What gives him his inspiration to do the good things that his church does needs to be shared so others are also engaged and getting the same satisfaction. And so when we, and I, I include myself as this is a fault, when we take on a task like that, which so engages us and we get satisfaction out of it, we are not letting somebody else in our chapter be engaged and get the same satisfaction. So it's not like we're shunting off a responsibility. It's a good thing to have other people engaged. And Marty, I gotta believe that your chapter, you've got a lot of people. I mean, it doesn't make any difference. You still have some small group that is the most engaged and be they your board or those that have individual responsibilities. How many members do you have at this point? I'm gonna guess close to 200, rough. I'm not asking for an exact count. Where, where are you roughly? And my follow-up- I think we're at 150 okay. to 160. Of the 150, if you said, these are my active ones, these are the ones I can always count on, is it 10% or more? A little bit more. Yeah, more. Okay. Maybe it, a third. It, oh, it does follow wonderful. the 80-20 rule. If yeah. you have 100 people, 80 people are observing and 20 people are doing the work. I mean, that's yeah. the percent, right? Joy, well, what? when we say that, they're not actually doing the work. They're uh, people that are attending and, okay. yeah. We have, a small, event or... we have a small number of people doing the work. Right. Okay. And, and I was using engagement to mean those that come to meetings and so forth. Right. Uh, I shouldn't use just the word work because you're right. There's an <laughs> even smaller number that have an assignment and they're following through on it. Joy, you wanted to say something. Oh, I was at, I thought they had a very great response and I was going to ask them, how do we do it? We even have somebody that was involved with national and I'm having a very hard time in keeping that person motivated. Or so, so I find it, uh, we have some people that do so much and are so dedicated. And then we have people that, uh, that don't. 
So well, again, I, I finally, in, at my age, accepted the fact that the 80-20 rule is a rule of nature. And <laughs> if you can get that 20% working with you, you can get a lot done for the other 80% who are part of what's going on. I don't want to just say they're hanging on. They're coming to listen to the speaker, and that's what you want to give them the service. Uh, but it's a challenge. Marty, you had your hand up there. I wanted to ask Brooke the question. Uh, Brooke, um, when I have a personal Facebook page, I take my friends list to the limit, which is about 5,000. But on Trio, I can't get it. I, I've been stuck in the 2,900 bracket now for probably over a year. Hmm. I mean, we had, I mean, it took nine years to get this far, but it's kind of like really stalled. Yeah. So is there a way to move that forward or... You know, it, and I try, and trust me, I try everything. And I, you know, I cross market with a lot of groups and stuff like that, but I still can't make it grow at a um, good pace. Do you do video content? Or is it mostly links? No, it's a, it's a lot of stories. If there's a video attached, I do a good mix of everything, actually. I mean, I think the, the best way to boost engagement is have asking the people who follow that page to share it. Like if this is meaningful, share it. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause sometimes we're like, Oh, that was so cool. But we don't think like it's really easy to click share and we just don't. Um, so ask for what you need from your people. Okay. Uh, say, Hey, is this story powerful? Share it with your people. And when they do that, people will go, Oh, that's good. And they'll click back to your page and then they'll see the other really good content you have. And then they're going to follow you. So it's that it's that drawing people in and a lot of it is trial and error, depending on who you're working with. So video content is king right now. People want to see faces and movement if they have to like click more than once to get to it. They don't want to do that. Um, you, you know, it, and that's why I've tried to cross marketing. That's why I've been working with some other groups that are like us, but different than us. Yep. And it seems to be picking up a few that way. But that was just a crazy wild idea I had a couple of weeks ago to do that. Yeah, that's a great idea. And I do a lot of that. Do you look at your analytics? I try to. Okay. Do you know what they mean? Probably. I, it's kind of like doing hashtags. You know, you have good intentions, but you don't always do it. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I don't analyze myself probably enough. I mean, that's the only way that I am seeing people grow in any social media environment. Like, so if you have an Instagram account for Trio and it's mm -hmm. not a business account, like you, all you have to do is like switch it to a business account, then you're okay. going to get, you're going to be able to see your analytics way more, your insights. Okay. Um, that's going to show you like, um, that'll show you who you're reaching that follows you and who you're reaching that's not following you. It'll okay. show you your top cities, top countries. It'll show you gender. Um, so if I think I'm designing great content for both men and women, and I've still got like 80% women, like that doesn't mean I'm just doing flowers and stuff. A lot of women are more engaged in general. Um, <clears throat> but the analytics are a key to growth. Cause if you don't know where you're at, you don't know where you're going. That's a whole nother subject. And maybe we should come back to that another time. The whole analytics thing, because there's such great things there. When you oh. just talked about changing over to business, was that Twitter you said? Instagram. Instagram. Okay. Hey, I'm watching the time and this has been great. Uh, I know Brooke said, well, I don't know if I can talk for 15 minutes. Yeah, right. It's that interesting <laughs> a topic and engaging as we had this discussion back and forth is absolutely the golden bar for uh, this type of uh, event. And so I really appreciate it. Uh, again, both for the video audience that will follow. If you have a question, if you send it to Gary at info at trioweb.org. He will pass it on to Brooke and we'll take her answers and get it back to you. But also we're going to try and figure out how do we accumulate those questions and answers someplace where anybody can go find even the questions they didn't think to ask. And Brooke, yes, Marty. Oops, oh, you're muted. muted. I'm sorry, I was muted. Yeah. It's a guy working the controls. You know how that goes. Uh, Brooke, <laughs> is there any chance uh, that we could have a private conversation with you where Absolutely. we can kind of like look at the Facebook page and say, hey, let's talk about doing this, doing this, maybe our website, you know, some corrections maybe that would help. Yes. Would that be possible? 
Of course, that's possible. So um, you can get to me through any of those channels right there. If you want to take a picture with your phone or a screenshot, you can do that. Um, yeah, I I do consults all the time. And because you're transplant people, that's I'm not going to charge you for that. This It's a bonus, you, a bonus for being here live. <laughs> How about that? Okay, Sam's leaving us right now and <clears throat> our time is up and that's what we commit to an hour. Brooke, thank you. That was excellent. Thank you. And we have a way to continue the conversation. And if anybody needs to contact Brooke, uh, both Gary and I have her contact information. And again, just through info at, uh, we'll be glad to pass it on for you. And Joy, I'm glad you were able to join us even for the end, but this is recorded and we will put it out there so you can go to the Thank first you. 45 minutes. You. And those chapters that couldn't attend will have an opportunity to see this too, because I think it's very you. productive. Brooke, you did a great job. Uh, I certainly feel I moved up a notch on the Good. level of understanding. And I feel much more comfortable with the hashtag and the at symbol now. And you you did it. So thank you again. I thank thought you. you were great too, Brooke. Really, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I'm really. sorry I missed some of it, but we'll do something on analytics in the future. Uh, that's a question that I just If Jim up, doesn't, so. you can reach out to me and I'll help you. How about that? <laughs> well, I, I think we can do even better than that, Brooke. Uh, if you want to put together some thinking on that, maybe we'll do a one-on-one -on -one interview or mm -hmm. we just, we don't have to make it one of these five master classes. We can offer it as another opportunity for the chapters and we'll record that because it's one of those things that even people that aren't interested today, by tomorrow, they say, you know what? I'm now at a point where I'm going to pay attention to analytics. Yeah. So they can go back to it. And the other thing that you caught me on uh, that I hadn't thought of, YouTube, I use YouTube a lot and I never thought of it as a social media platform. And yet I use YouTube on Facebook. And I, mm -hmm. as you said, I love the way that works. Uh, and I thought, hey, that's a cool idea. I never thought of using it as social media. And it gives me the variety that Marty said he does with his, for example. And so there's a whole different uh, world there that you just opened up. So thank you again. <laughs> of course. All right. Fun. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank Good night, you. everyone. Good night. Bye. Have a great evening.